in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The Masquerade. So, Tom Thomas, did you choose a costume for the New Year's party? Not yet. These are no good. I've been a pirate. How about a vampire? Did that. And a knight? Mm-hmm. This year, I... I want to do something that's original. And what if... I know what! You can go dressed as me! As Nolik! Perfect! No one's ever gone as a fixie. Ever! Long, long ago, people would put on masks and dance in order to scare away evil spirits. In ancient theater, actors would change masks to play a few different roles. Everyone liked the idea of hiding their faces behind mysterious masks so much that people started organizing fun outdoor festivals called masquerades. There are countries around the world, like Brazil and Italy, that turn into one big masquerade ball during the holidays. Hey there, what are you making? A costume for a masquerade! Can you guess who I'm going as? Yeah, but why does it have to be Nolik? Because I came up with it! Fire'd be a much cooler costume! <laughs> That's not true! Stop arguing! I can go dress up as you and you! Now we're talking! <clears throat> Smart fixies wear glasses. <laughs> Your glasses are too small to even fit on his finger. They don't make glasses just like yours. What a cute fixie. Splendid. Not bad. Only if I were you, I'd add a backpack to your costume. Any fixie who's fashionable is wearing it. And maybe add my curls to it, please? Uh... If you don't, then our feelings will be hurt. Class! Did we cover everybody? Oh! We didn't include Simka! <gasps> and where are we going to find room for her? What can I do about it? I already got to get going. Then let's just not tell her. See you later, Tom Thomas. Thanks, guys. Kitty! What have you been doing all this time while I was busy loading up the confetti? Uh, we were doing our homework. And looking at this magazine? And talking? Yeah, all of that and more. <laughs> That's got to be the worst lying ever. Tell me what you're hiding. Have you lost your mind? Sorry, but there was absolutely no room left on Tom Thomas. That's not what I'm talking about. What is the number one rule for fixies? Well, what did we promise? We, we won't, won't let out our secret. secret. Right, but you just let it out. Now everyone will know. Tom Thomas wouldn't tell anyone about us. I hope he doesn't. Well, maybe. Everyone will figure that he's dressed up like some nutty candy. What kind of nutty candy has a backpack on and glasses? We're in real trouble. I thought the glasses looked sharp. So what are we going to do now? Call the professor, right? Or we should call Grandpus or Papus. Ah! Don't panic. Let's wait till Tom Thomas gets back. There are many different types of masks, and some of them are very important. Medical masks are used by both doctors and sick people to reduce the spread of illnesses. Oxygen masks help people breathe. Fencers, hockey goalies, and boxers all use masks to protect their faces from being hit. The blue glass in a welder's mask is used to protect their eyes from dangerously bright light. Sea divers wear masks for swimming underwater. Without a mask, it would be very difficult to see the beauty of the underwater world. The masks that people wear at carnivals and parties? Well, they're just for having fun and putting everyone in a good mood. Or as a disguise, so that no one recognizes you right away. It can be a lot of fun to fool somebody like that.
So how was it? It was great! They had a contest for costumes, and I won! Hooray, that's all. Say bye to us. <sighs> I hope you won't be upset, guys. But I couldn't tell anyone that I was a fixie. Here's all I could think of. Grand prize for best costume, robotic toucan! Hey, come on! Do you think we look like toucans? Yeah? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> All right there, fixie toucans. We've got work to do. Oops. Happy New Year. <laughs> Buttered bread. It's not right to eat when you're playing a game. I know your mom told you that. Come on, stop distracting me. Oh no, that's the game. Now that's what you call Murphy's Law, Nola. <laughs> no, that's the law of buttered bread. The law of buttered bread. <laughs> There's no way that's a real law. People say that bread always lands butter side down. Scientists laugh at that, but there is a grain of truth in it. First of all, a sandwich usually falls from the low height of a table, and so it only has time to make a half turn. Second, the side of the bread with the butter is heavier, and that pulls it towards the ground. And third, people remember the bad things that happened to them. So, they believe that butter bread always lands the wrong way. That's just goofy. I don't believe in that law. It's true, and not just for buttered bread, but any open-faced sandwich. Then let's do an experiment. We got tons of food in here. We just cover some bread with it, and then throw it. All right, let's do it. Well, jelly side down. Uh-huh. And the cheese went down. And the chocolate spreads out of luck, too. The bologna didn't do any better. Do you believe me now? Not yet. Let's keep going. We should try some other methods of throwing. Oh, that's everything. There's nothing left. No, there's still some turkey. Where did you see that? Here it is. Take some from this plate instead. Your mom already cooked it. Hey, turkey, show them how you're supposed to fall. Aha! Didn't I, uh, tell ya? You vandals! Why are you throwing food all over the place? It's simply awful. Hey, give it back! Please, we're testing the law of buttered bread. You gotta be kidding. Your mom is gonna love you for that. Can you please put the sandwich on a plate already? It's too heavy for us to keep holding it up. Good. There you go. Tom Thomas, do you have any idea at all how nutritious that turkey is? And delicious, I'd imagine. And turkey's a healthy food that has lots of protein, vitamins, and what do you call them? Micro-elements. That's not all. Eating that turkey could make you grow. If you eat that sandwich, you could grow a centimeter. I think that's true. Yeah, and it'll give you some extra strength, which you're gonna need when you clean up your kitchen. Humans eat food not only to make them strong, but also to grow and develop. Take a look at all these different foods. Do you think they have anything at all in common? Well, actually, they do. All foods contain nutrients like proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Combining them properly is the science of nutrition. Foods with fats and carbohydrates give humans energy, while those with protein are essential for helping children grow. People love to eat food that is delicious, fresh, and assorted. Try to eat all sorts of good foods like salads and soups, cereals, potatoes, vegetables, and meats, and not just sandwiches. But when it's time for a little snack, a sandwich can be just right, and it's so easy to make.
happened to all of our bread? There's only one slice left. I made an experiment. A real one. I see. Well, science requires sacrifice. And there's no doubt that scientific experience is way better than playing with the phone all day. Right? Mm-hmm. Can I have another piece of turkey? I don't know why, but I'm really hungry today. Hmm. No, that's what I call Murphy's Law. No! That's what they call the law of buttered bread, Dad. Did you hear? The law is a law. The detective. All right, yeah, that is. Wasn't it great that we got to stay after class and watch that movie together? Yeah, that film was great. That detective, what a guy. He figured out exactly who did it. <gasps> Solving a crime is not easy at all. But it looks like a lot of fun. Ugh, I think it would be so cool to go solve a crime. <gasps> Where's my lucky screwdriver? I can't do anything without it. Here we go. This could be the crime of the century. Detective Nolik, are you ready? But we're not. There's no escaping our fate, colleague. Our time has come. In order to become a detective or an investigator, you need to be very attentive and astute because detectives solve mysteries, find missing things, and detangle the most twisted cases. For instance, who ate the whole cake without permission? A real detective will notice the minor details right away. Crumbs under the sofa, a trail of paw prints across the room. By following the clues, a real detective will easily discover the thief. All right. It's time for us to figure out who stole the screwdriver. And the screwdriver, don't we need to find it? Not now. First, let's find the thief. Oh, look at that. It's Digit. Digit? Huh? Why are you back at the laboratory? Our school classes are over. I want to talk to the professor. I came up with the coolest thing to make. What cool thing? It's a secret. That's a bit hard to believe. All right now, suspect. What were you doing after school? What do you mean, suspect? There must be some mix-up here. You're trying to dodge the question? You want to change the subject on me? That's it. I'm leaving. No screwdriver, no experiments. Well... You want to take over for your genius, and that's why you stole his lucky screwdriver. You're under arrest. The main qualities of a detective are intelligence and logic. Logic is an ancient science that teaches people to think with reason, to help them solve problems, puzzles, and riddles. Do you want to feel what it's like to be a real detective? Then try to figure out what I'm describing to you. I'm thinking of an animal that you can meet at home or on the street. It has a tail and it's long. You have any guesses? A dog, a cat, or a mouse? Uh-huh, there's not enough information yet. But what if I add that it meows and sleeps all day long? Then the answer is clear. A detective works the same way. He collects the facts, decides what's important, gets rid of what's not, and only then figures out the right answer. Understand? Then you're ready for another puzzle. Tell me, who doesn't belong here? Are you gonna talk? <laughs> Funny mustaches you got there. Oh, it's a party, right? Mm-hmm. They arrested me. Is this a game you're playing? <laughs> Tula, you believe that a lucky object can bring good fortune now, don't you? Well, yeah. And what? Now it's clear. You helped Digit steal Eugenius's lucky screwdriver. Yeah, because you like lucky stuff. Arrest her. Tula, how long do I have to wait? Sipka, you gotta see this! We caught the criminals who stole the screwdriver from the professor! Cool, huh? Just awesome. Let's go, Tula. She stays here, under arrest. Yeah, I got it. Come on, let's go. We're not joking around. Oh, and exactly what proof do you have? What proof do I have? Well, uh... Just what I thought. You have nothing, Fire. 
She's their partner, of course! Nolik, arrest her at once! What did she do wrong? It's insane! Now do what I said! I won't do it! Ah, you're with them! Stand with the crooks over there! Hey, we're partners, aren't we? Now wait a second! I'm wondering if you were the thief! Me? Yes! Right! It's not me, I swear! I'm a detective! Ah, Nolik, please tell him! You put it away? In the warehouse? Oh, Elisa, I've told you a hundred times. Please, don't touch my mess. Uh, appears I was a bit off track. You'd have been better off looking for the screwdriver, detectives. That's what I told you. All right, we'll look for a new tactic to use on our next case. What do you mean on your next case? Where's my lucky soldering iron? So, Detective Nolik, shall we begin? <laughs> Water. Hi, I'm all ready. Nolik, he's gonna stay home like we agreed. Uh-huh, see you soon. Who's there? Nolik, it's you. I, I gotta go. I'll go with you. No, we've got... We've got an important job. Little kids aren't allowed. Why can't I help you? Because this work is very demanding. Only it's boring. And you're impatient, so you'll bother us. Huh? But I am patientist. Patient, son? I mean, patient. Like, totally patient. Prove it, then. How? See that, uh, water filter? You have to count how many glasses of water it cleans. How many do I need to count? If you can reach a hundred, I'll believe you're patient. Why do they need that filter? Why not just drink water out of the sink? Don't worry about it. You need to be counting. That was one. Without water, life is not possible. The human body is made up of two-thirds water, and people need to drink it all the time, but only when it's clean water. Water is transported from rivers and lakes into houses through pipes. Along the way, it gets cleaned of debris and dirt. But even so, this water might still contain toxic substances or harmful microbes. That's why people use filters to clean water for drinking. No bad stuff can get through this last line of defense. saying that I'm skin and bones. There you go! That's why you need to drink water! Drink some more! And some more! Come on, come on! That's all. I ran out of room. You have to have plenty of room left. Why do you care about how much water I'm drinking? Because I gotta count. How much water is going through the filter? I really gotta. Yeah, and what? It's gotta go through me for you to count it? I'm totally full. What am I supposed to do? I've been waiting here in the kitchen all day, but nobody's drinking. What's going on? <gasps> the filter is broken. You gotta call Simka right away. 415, 416, 417, 418, Simka, it's an emergency! What? The filter's burning! <laughs> You're really funny, Nolik. Simka, he's not choking! Something's going on over there. We gotta hurry! <laughs> Where's the emergency? Look! So, what's going on here? Great. Now we're stuck fixing the filter. It's not broken. The flashing red light is an indicator. It means it's time to replace the cartridge in the filter. Since ancient times, people have been coming up with ways to remember things or to not mix things up. Knots on ropes were used as reminders that it was time to pay back a debt or reap a harvest. 
People would cut notches into trees to help remember numbers. Later, people invented the abacus, calendars, and day planners. And now, things are even easier, because devices can give us reminders. Alarm clocks help people get up on time. A loud oven timer can save a pie from burning. The green light of an indicator shows that a device is turned on and ready to be used. A red light shows the opposite. <laughs> Today, smart appliances can tell their owners what they need to do. Without them, humans can be so absent-minded. Cartridge is enough for another 2,000 glasses. 2,000? And what do I do about this? Whoa. <laughs> All right, Nolik, you've done a good job there. Way to go. Yeah? If you want, I can do it. Tom Thomas, want some water to drink? Uh uh. I can't drink anymore. And I can't wait anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like his indicator is flashing on now. <laughs> <laughs> Traffic light. Red. Yellow. Green. All right, let's go. Tom Thomas, why did we stop? There's a crosswalk. When there are lines like that, you have to let pedestrians cross. Go on. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good trip. Stop now. There's no crosswalk. But that's a crossing gate, Fire. You have to let the train pass. Wow, that is cool. Hi there, Nolik. Come on down. Check out this traffic light. It's new. Is that a real traffic light? Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. It looks awesome. Nolik, where are you going? Stop. <gasps> <gasps> Today. Now look at it. Uh, you were supposed to let me cross. You ran into the street when the light was red. A traffic light is a street lamp that sends multicolored signals to vehicles and pedestrians so they don't get in each other's way when they're on the road. When the light is red, it means stop. You must stay where you are. A yellow light tells drivers, caution, prepare to stop. You are only allowed to start crossing the street after the traffic light changes to the color green. And even then, it's important to remember, look both ways before crossing. Got it? You can only cross on green, Nolik. Even really little kids know that. But the light was green. No, it was red. No, green. It, it was, was red. red. It was green, I swear. Maybe you're colorblind or something. Yeah, possibly. Uh, what does it mean if you're colorblind? It means you can't tell colors apart. So you don't know which one's red and which one's green. Uh, that's what I am. Right. <laughs> you never mixed up colors before this. Okay. What color is that nightstand over there? Uh, it's red. And the plane up there? Oh, that's green. How about me, huh? What color am I? Green is blue is brown is gray. With folk dots. I'm what? It's true. He's colorblind. Poor kid. Told ya. Wasn't my fault. All right. We'll sort it out at home. And what are we gonna do with the traffic light? We can fix it. And we'll fix your car, too. All right. What color's the car? Purple? If you say so. We got work to do. So take a seat before you mix something else up. The road can be a dangerous place. There are so many cars and pedestrians on it, and all of them are in a rush to get where they're going. But be careful. Even if a driver notices a pedestrian on the road and brakes, it can still take quite some distance before the car comes to a complete stop. 
to avoid disaster, have respect for one another. If you need to cross the street, go to the nearest traffic light, crosswalk, or sign with a pedestrian on it. While you're still on the sidewalk, look to your left and then to your right and see how far away any cars, motorcycles, or bicycles are. If they're close, then just stay where you are. If the driver is responsible and polite, he will stop for you if he sees you from a distance. If you want to make yourself more visible when it's dark, attach safety reflectors to your clothes, and then it will be safe for everyone on the road. All fixed. Tom Thomas, test it out. Turning the lights on. So, is it right? Yeah. Take your places. All right, let's cross. Ready, set, go! The game is up. You aren't colorblind, Nolik. You know what you are? You're a fainter. Me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I got a little of it right in here. And once in a while, it goes up here. Uh, what's a fainter, anyway? <laughs> the Rock. Tom Thomas is back! Hooray! So, how was your camping trip? Super! You've got to check out what I found. Rocks? That's just half of it. Wow, is that a screw? It looks kind of strange. Because it got petrified millions of years ago. <laughs> Screws weren't around then. They came much later. And how do we know that? It could be the first one discovered. And maybe it's not just some screw. Know what I'm saying? Are you saying that we might be looking at... A fixie! <laughs> Pixies believe that their ancestors came into being not that long ago, right when humans started inventing complicated devices. But what if that's not true? Maybe millions of years ago, before the dinosaurs, there were a different kind of Fixies that inhabited the Earth. And maybe there were people then, too. And Fixies weren't hiding from them. They were friends who they helped with everything. Together, they used to create inventions, construct buildings, and make scientific discoveries. But then there was some horrible catastrophe, and this whole civilization disappeared. And what if someday scientists find traces of that civilization? Then ancient fixies will be discovered as well. That would be so cool. <laughs> My imagination ran away with me. You're right. He could be our great-great-grandpoosh. Or our great-great-grandmas. Do you think maybe we could bring it back to life? We could screw it in somewhere. You get energy from electricity, right? What an idea! But what if our great-great gets super scared because everything is different? We can build him a prehistoric world to wake up to! Time to bring him back to life. And you, Tom Thomas, disguise yourself. We'll break him like this. We need a different way to do it. We need more power for this. <laughs> there wasn't any electricity back then. That's why shocking him won't work. <laughs> Oh, our great-great ancestor, who came to us from an ancient home, be released from this stone. Be free! Why is it always so difficult with relatives? Wake up! Wake up! And what if... Everything. This is just a waste of time. Uh, let's sing that song about the screw. Our song. No, 
Alec, it's never gonna work. You don't know that. We can at least give it a try. If, if you, you think, think a screw is nothing, nothing take it, it out, out, but just beware. beware. Everything will break without them with no little, little screws in there. Look, it's moving. It's impossible. It really did. If, if you, you think, think a screw, screw is nothing, nothing take, take it out, but just beware. Now, Thomas, hey. Well, how was your camping trip? Uh. Seems to me quite a success. Yeah. So, let's see what you found there. Do you know what this is? Well, it's a rock. It isn't. It's the stalk of a sea lily. You mean a flower? An animal who lives at the bottom of the sea. Its stalk makes it look like a flower, like a lily. On planet Earth, there are lots of rocks. Some of them are hiding deep below the surface, and others appear with volcanic lava. Remember those fairy tales where an evil witch would turn everything living into stone? Well, it's really happened, just without any magic. Some prehistoric plants and animals were petrified way back when, and they've remained that way ever since. Thanks to them, we can get an idea about what life was like on Earth millions of years ago. And this one's a devil's finger, the squid's ancestor. How do you know all this stuff? When I was your age, I collected fossils and rocks. Let's go. I'll show you my collection. Do you think any of our ancestors were sea lilies? Uh-uh. Shame. Why did I let myself get so carried away? There weren't any ancient fixies in the world. <sighs> but I... I still believe it!